Hello, hello, and welcome to The Conservative Poet with me, Amanya. Super excited today. I was going to try to do a live, but didn't quite figure out how to do that. So we're just not going to do it. But I, I will figure it out at some point. Today's video, we are watching President Trump at the Alabama GOP dinner um, their annual dinner, it happens um, on in the summers. So that's what we're going to do today. So we're just going to sit back and we're going to just watch Trump. He's had a rough week with these indictments of January 6th. I mean, this BS, this witch hunt, any event. But, you know, Trump, you push and he pushed back. Can't take him down. And that's why we love him. So we're going to watch this, watch his speech today on this dinner. So if you're interested in seeing that, then let's do it. Let's go and see the best president ever. 45, 46, and 47. 45, 46, and 47. 45, 46, and 47. I said it. I said what I said. How far will the most corrupt president in history go to keep Republicans from winning back the White House? Meet the cast of unscrupulous accomplices he's assembled to get Trump. Alvin Bragg, the radical liberal New York prosecutor who refuses to prosecute violent criminals. Jack Smith, who's made a career persecuting innocent Republican officials. Letitia James, the socialist who ran on the promise, I'll go after Trump. And Biden's newest lackey, Atlanta DA, Fonnie Willis. So incompetent, on her watch, violent crimes have exploded. So tainted, Willis was thrown off one case for trying to prosecute a political opponent. So corrupt, Willis got caught hiding a relationship with a gang member she was prosecuting. So dishonest, Willis was accused of creating a fake subpoena. Welcome to the Fraud Squad. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together and welcome Alabama's own Senator Tommy Tuberville. Tuberville. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm not even from Alabama. I know you didn't come here to hear me talk. Heck, I even saw some Alabama fans stand up. Man, this world's going crazy. What the heck? It's great to be here. Stan Pate, I see him down here in front. It must be an important meeting. Alabama Republicans, I'm glad to be here. Glad to be home in sweet home Alabama. Sweet home Alabama. Now, last four weeks, I've been in the clown show in Washington, D.C., and folks, it is a clown show. But I got home and was able to travel around the state this week, went to the Wiregrass, went to Mobile, Birmingham, up to Rainsville, Gunnersville, Montgomery. Spoke a lot with the farmers, but everywhere I went, I never realized how big a state that this is for Trump. This is Trump Trump country. country. My gosh. Trump country. So I'm going to make this short because I want the man to come out. He's got a lot to say. He's had a tough week. Yeah. We need to stand behind yeah. him. It's great he's here in a place like Alabama that loves Donald Trump. Because sometimes even as strong as he is, and as much as he puts back, he needs encouragement. Yeah. They're after him. Folks, they're not after him. They're after you. They're after our country. Our country is in trouble. 
I've been up there two and a half years, and I've never been embarrassed as much as I've ever seen things that have changed. Yes, we have Republicans and we have Democrats, but it is much about Americans versus anti-Americans, people that do not like this country. They like living here, but they don't like the way it is. They should leave. They want to change our Constitution. They, they want to change our Bill of Rights. We're not going to allow that to happen. It's embarrassing to watch it go on. They've ruined our borders. They've created crime. They've infiltrated our DA and our prosecutors. They've done everything they possibly can to bring this country to its knees. Inflation. And how about this? I'm a football coach. You can't run a country without fossil fuels. You can't do it. You cannot do it. It's impossible. They're trying to make this country crash and burn. They're trying to bring it to its knees. We're not going to allow that to happen. It's so important We're fight. that we step up. We're going to fight. We step up and get behind this fight. man who we've got some good Republicans in this country. I'll tell you, I work with a lot. But there's nobody that could get the job done faster, quicker, and more efficient than Donald J. Trump. No nobody. Why. He's not a politician. He's a businessman. He despises the deep state. He's got experience. And he doesn't need eight years. It's only going to take him a few, him a few years to get this back and get it going again. And that's what we have to have, folks. We are... A year and a half left with this this bunch of uh, uh, clowns. Agabons. We cannot Agabons. give them four more years. If that happens, we're in trouble. Agabons. We're in real trouble. So thanks for what you're doing. My gosh, look at this crowd. I've been here before. I've never seen it like this. I've never seen it. It's pat yourself on the back. But understand, it is going to be a fight for the next year and a half. We have got to fight back. We have got to help this president. we got to get encourage him. Because, again, it is tough. It's tough on him and his family, but he's doing it for all of us, not for him. So it gives me great pride to introduce the 45th president of the United States and the future 47th president of the United five, States, 46, President Donald five, J. Six, Trump. Well, I want to thank you, and it's great to be back in Alabama with so many proud American patriots who stand for God, family, and God country. Family That's what country. Stand for. I want to thank Governor Kay Ivey for being with us tonight, and the great Kay. You look great, Kay. I'm not surprised. Doing a good job, too. We appreciate it very much. Thank you. And also Chairman John Wall, he broke all sorts of records tonight. They broke the attendance and the fundraising records. They broke every record in the book. So, John, uh, really good job. Please sit down. We're going to be here for a little while, right? Sit We're down. Gonna be, I'm going to lay down. Thank you very much. <laughs> but John's been a friend uh, really from the beginning. And today I'm also greatly honored to receive the endorsements of so many outstanding Alabama leaders. We have just about all of them that we were looking for. They've been warriors with me, and uh, they know how we fight, and they know how to fight, and they know that we win. Most of whom, though, are with us tonight, including your great senator who just introduced me, Tommy Tuberville. What a great man. He's strong, he's smart, he's loyal. Then he's truly a fantastic guy, and he's my friend, and we love Tommy. Treat him good. We have one of the really, thank you. We have one of the great ones there. Representatives, Jerry Carl, Barry Moore, Mike Rogers, Robert Adderholt, Dale Strong, and Gary Palmer. These are warriors. Gary's feeling better now. He had a little problem with the back, but he's feeling good and he wanted to be here and I appreciate it. But these are fantastic people. Uh, Lieutenant Governor Will Ainsworth, thank you, Will, very much for being with us. Doing a great job. Agriculture Commissioner Rick Pate. Rick, thank you very much. 
Public Service Commission President Twinkle Cavanaugh. I love that name, Twinkle. Thank you very much. Thanks. Public Service Commissioners Jeremy Oden and Chip Beaker. And I really appreciate you and being here. And Cliff Sims, thanks for doing a fantastic job, Cliff. I'd also like to recognize Alabama Secretary of State Wes Allen, who's here. Wes, thank you. Thank you, Wes. State Senator Gerald Allen. Senator, thank you very much. Friends of mine, Ambassador Lindy Blanchard and her great husband, John. Thank you very much. It was a wonderful job. A wonderful, wonderful job as ambassador. A man who's just been incredible. What a voice he's got and what a wife he's got. His wife is named Kim and his name is Lee Greenwood. And he sings that beautiful song. Is Where is Lee? Is Lee here? We got to see Lee. Thank you. What a voice. What a voice. We don't know what it is, Lee, but it works. And they love it. And uh, congratulations. Great career and great family. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Catherine Engelbrecht, a real incredible woman. Where is Catherine and Greg Phillips? Where are they? Truth to vote. They have done a job. They found more fake votes than any people, I think, in this country. And they are fake with all of the things. And they have them on tape. And you go through a lot. And we appreciate it. And get ready. Get those votes ready. Just get them ready. Keep those tapes handy. Oh because you're going to need them, and we're going to all need them as a country. Thank you very much. You do a fantastic job. Real patriots. We appreciate it. Eight years ago this month, we held one of the very first rallies of the 2016 campaign right here in Alabama. Together, we launched the greatest political movement in the history of our country, and now with the help of Alabama patriots. Oh, we love Alabama. Won it by 45 points. But Alabama patriots like you, we're going to do it again, but we're going to do it even bigger and better than 2016. You know, I don't know if you know, we got a hell of a lot more votes in 2020 than we did in 2016. Millions and millions of more votes. But 2016 was very, very special, and we taught people a lot, and they taught us a lot, frankly. But this state has been with us right from the beginning, Kay, I have to say, right from the beginning. And we will completely finish the job. We are going to do something that's going to be so incredible. On Election Day 2024, we're going to evict crooked Joe Biden from the White House. We're going to expel the criminals and thugs from the halls of power in Washington, D.C. And we are going to make America great again. From the beginning of our movement, it's really been a true force in American politics that's dared to stand up. It's an incredible thing. We dared to stand up to the corrupt political establishment. That hasn't happened. That's why we have such difficulty, because they just can't stand us. But they're getting smaller and smaller. They're getting weaker and weaker. And we have to go on, and we have to win some battles. And I think you're seeing that we're winning a lot. We're going to have a tremendous election. The poll numbers are the highest we've ever had. And people are very upset out there, angry, upset. that They don't like what's happening to our country because our country is going to hell. Going to hell. Going to hell. We said no to open borders, no to globalist trade deals, no to endless wars, and no to the godless values of the communist left. That's what they are. They skipped socialism. Remember, I used to say, this will not be a socialist country, and I was right. They skipped that station. We always put America first. In response, our enemies unleashed an army of rabid left-wing lawyers, corrupts, and really corrupt Marxist prosecutors. These are dishonest people, bad people, deranged government agents and rogue intelligence officers to try and stop our movement. Remember the 51 intelligence officials that lied about the laptop? They said, oh, the laptop, Russia disinformation. No, they all lied. 51 of them lied. And it would have made a difference of about 11 points in the election, according to the pollsters. They lied. As an example, every one of these many fake charges filed against me by the corrupt Biden DOJ could have been filed two and a half years ago. They didn't want to do it two and a half years ago. They wanted to wait. And they did wait. They waited right to the middle of an election. 
and they waited until I became the dominant force in the polls because we're dominating everybody, including Biden in the polls. And then they filed them all, every one of them, all at essentially one time, including local DAs and AGs and even other cases, right in the middle of the campaign, where we're leading by so much. And it's not going to make any impact because every time they file an indictment, we go way up in the polls. We need one more indictment to close out this election. One more indictment. And this election is closed out. Nobody has even a chance. We've already defeated the Republicans. There are two and three and one. You know, they all want me to go, Kay, onto the debate stage. And I say, well, if we're at 71 and they're at zero, one, two, three, some of them are at four or five. I don't know. Does it really make a lot of sense? It doesn't really. I love to debate, but, you know, sometimes you don't want to be a fool. You want a smart president. You don't want a stupid president. Joe Biden. But, you know, the radical left, what they say is, oh, we want Trump. That's only because we're leading in the polls, because they're a party of disinformation, misinformation, a big party of disinformation. The person they don't want is Trump. We beat them by so much last time. We beat them with crooked Hillary. They've never recovered from that. That's why the hatred is so great. But remember this. If somebody else were leading this banner, they'd be attacked with false stories also. They'd be attacked with the Russia, Russia, Russia hoax and the fake dossiers and all of the crazy things that these people do. They're lunatics. And the question is, I don't believe they'd be able to handle it because you got to be very different. I'm not going to go beyond that, but you got to be very different to be able to do what we did. In four years, we had one of the most successful administrations in history with the tax cuts and the rebuilding of our military, the greatest regulation cuts in history. And we didn't get involved in any wars. We brought our people back home. We defeated ISIS, all of the things that we did. The fact is that it's not fair and it's probably not legal what they're doing. They want to interfere in my campaign. They want to interfere in the elections. They commonly use tactic in third world countries. That's where this tactic comes, third world fourth world, fifth world countries. And they're taking it to a level that our country has never seen. The fake charges put forth in their sham indictment are an outrageous criminalization of political speech. This all it is. You make a statement, oh, we have to indict him because he said we were dishonest. Let's indict him. They're trying to make it illegal to question the results of a bad election. It was a very bad election. Everybody knows that. But only a party that cheats in elections. Thank you guys so much for your support. And before we continue with the video, please take a minute to listen to Mammoth Nation, the sponsor of this video. Thank you. Save America. Save our values. Save our traditions. Stop using woke platforms to spend your money. Stop. This episode of The Conservative Poet is brought to you by Mammoth Nation. Mammoth Nation is a conservative marketplace where you, the patriot, can go and purchase the items that you need. Mammoth Nation is an online subscription-based platform. So you have to be subscribed in order to get all the wonderful discounts. You can get up to 70% discounts on so many of the stores. They have phone services, um, services for food, traveling, hotel. They refuse to let anti-American companies join their platforms. The vendors have been carefully vetted and have been approved a conservative American values, which is one of the reasons we have partnered um, because I do love what they offer. I love that they are offering opportunities to American um vendors and american creators as well so we are trying to put america first here and that's one of the things we do on this channel and so i support mammoth nation and what they do to put conservative american businesses first so visit mammoth nation today so you can get the discounts that you deserve with american made products so use code amanya s that's a-m-a-n-i-a S 
Again, that's Amanya S for your discounts today on these amazing opportunities. Can't stand us, but they're getting smaller and smaller. They're getting weaker and weaker, and we have to go on and we have to win some battles. And I think you're seeing that we're winning a lot. We're going to have a tremendous election. The poll numbers are the highest we've ever had. And people are very upset out there, angry, upset that they don't like what's happening to our country because our country is going to hell, going to hell. Oh, yeah. We said no to open borders, no to globalist trade deals, no to endless wars and no to the godless values of the communist left. That's what they are. They skipped socialism. Remember, I used to say this will not be a socialist country. And I was right. They skipped that station. We always put America first. In response, our enemies unleashed an army of rabid left-wing lawyers, corrupts, and really corrupt Marxist prosecutors. These are dishonest people, bad people, deranged government agents and rogue intelligence officers to try and stop our movement. Remember the 51 intelligence officials that lied about the laptop? They said, oh, the laptop, Russia disinformation. No, they all lied. 51 of them lied. And it would have made a difference of about 11 points in the election, according to the pollsters. They lied. As an example, every one of these many fake charges filed against me by the corrupt Biden DOJ could have been filed two and a half years ago. They didn't want to do it two and a half years ago. They wanted to wait. And they did wait. They waited right to the middle of an election and they waited until I became the dominant force in the polls because we're dominating everybody, including Biden in the polls. And then they filed them all, every one of them, all at essentially one time, including local DAs and AGs and even other cases right in the middle of the campaign where we're leading by so much. And that's not going to make any impact because every time they file an indictment, we go way up in the polls. We need one more indictment to close out this election. One more indictment. And this election is closed out. Nobody has even a chance. We've already defeated the Republicans. There are two and three and one. You know, they all want me to go, Kay, onto the debate stage. And I say, well, if we're at 71 and they're at zero, one, two, three, some of them are at four or five. I don't know. Does it really make a lot of sense? It doesn't really. I love to debate, but you know, sometimes you don't want to be a fool. You want a smart president. You don't want a stupid president. That's from Joe Biden. Boom, boom, boom. But you know, the radical left, what they say is, oh, we want Trump. That's only because we're leading in the polls because they're a party of disinformation, misinformation, a big party of disinformation. The person they don't want is Trump. We beat them by so much last time. We beat them with crooked Hillary. They've never recovered from that. That's why the hatred is so great. But remember this. If somebody else were leading this banner, they'd be attacked with false stories also. They'd be attacked with the Russia, Russia, Russia hoax and the fake dossiers and all of the crazy things that these people do. They're lunatics. And the question is, I don't believe they'd be able to handle it because you got to be very different I'm not going to go beyond that, but you got to be very different to be able to do what we did. In four years, we had one of the most successful administrations in history with the tax cuts and the rebuilding of our military, the greatest regulation cuts in history. And we didn't get involved in any wars. We brought our people back home. We defeated ISIS, all of the things that we did. The fact is that it's not fair and it's probably not legal what they're doing. They want to interfere in my campaign. They want to interfere in the elections. They commonly use tactic in third world countries. That's where this tactic comes. Third world, fourth world, fifth world countries. And they're taking it to a level that our country has never seen. The fake charges put forth in their sham indictment are an outrageous criminalization of political speech. This all it is. You make a statement, oh, we have to indict him because he said we were dishonest. Let's indict him. They're trying to make it illegal to question the results of a bad election. It was a very bad election. Everybody knows that. But only a party that cheats in elections would try to make it illegal because 
If you have nothing to hide, why would you do that? And why would you be afraid to have those results come out? If you can't challenge a rigged election or if you don't have borders, then in actuality, you really don't have a country. We don't have borders. Millions and millions of people are pouring through our borders like an open wound, like a sieve. We're not the ones trying to undermine American democracy. We are the ones fighting to save our democracy. We're fighting to save our democracy. So this uh, ridiculous indictment against us, it's not a legal case. It's an act of desperation by a failed and disgraced crooked Joe Biden and his radical left thugs to preserve their grip on power. They want to do anything they can to preserve it. And we are in their way because we want to bring our country back. Our country has never been so bad. I don't think it's ever been in this position so bad. And we have a very dangerous situation because we have other countries with nuclear weapons and the weaponry is so powerful. And we have a man that could, he can't put together two sentences. Not even. And he's in charge of whether or not we have a nuclear war. And I don't like that. And you don't like that either. Biden and his protectors know he cannot win this race any other way. So now they're trying something that hasn't been tried in this country, election interference. They rigged the presidential election of 2020. We're not going to allow them to rig the presidential election of 2024. As the nation's top legal scholars have stated, the Biden administration's charges are a legal and constitutional travesty. Jonathan Turley, great guy, highly, highly respected, said this is a free speech killing indictment. Killing free speech, that's what it is. And referring to the deranged Jack Smith, He's not only going to have to just bulldoze through the First Amendment, he's going to have to bulldoze through a line of cases by the Supreme Court of the United States. In other words, this is an absolute case of prosecutorial misconduct. Andy McCarthy, highly respected, said this, to indict on such a theory in a manner that quite willfully intrudes into a presidential election is worse than irresponsible. The editors at the National Review wrote, this Trump indictment should not stand, should not stand. It's a terrible thing they're doing to our country. <laughs> the only civil rights that have been violated in this matter are my civil rights and those of the countless people that Biden and the communists have been persecuting. And they are communists and they're Marxists and they're, they're people that don't get it. They get it, they, you know, they're vicious and they're smart, but we're smarter and we're tougher than they are. And we're going to take it back and we have no choice because otherwise we're not going to have a country left. Okay. The reason this is happening is simple. Joe Biden is the most incompetent and at the same time, most corrupt president in the history of the United States. The Biden crime family was taking in money from China, Ukraine, Russia, and so many other countries. And now every time more Biden corruption is exposed, his henchmen indict me because they want to knock out the bad publicity. You ever see? Whenever they have something big happening, they put another indictment or a special indictment. It's called a cover-up. And what they do is illegal and horrible. Every time the radical left Democrats, Marxists, communists, and fascists indict me, I consider it a truly great badge of honor because I'm being indicted for you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. I appreciate that. I appreciate that, Lee Greenwood. Never forget our enemies want to stop us because we are the ones and the only ones that are able to stop them. They want to take away my freedom because I will never let them take away your freedom. It's very simple. They want to silence me because I will never let them silence you. In the end, they're not after me. They're after you. And I just happen to be standing in their way and I will never leave. I will never let them do that. And I promise you this. If you put me back in the White House, their reign will be over. And America will be a free nation once again. We're not a free nation. We don't have a free press. We have a corrupt press. They're corrupt. 
when I came out with a term many years ago, fake news now, I mean, honestly, it's just not a strong enough term. It's been a brilliant term, but it's not a strong enough. These are corrupt drain people. Drain it, drain the soil. They don't want to even report. I mean, you have Biden got $10.2 million. You don't even read it in a newspaper. You don't see it on the news. They don't want to talk about it. These well, people are corrupt. From the first day in office, I will appoint a special prosecutor to study each and every one of the many claims being brought forth by Congress concerning ooh. all of the crooked acts, including bribes from China and many other foreign countries that go into the coffers and go straight into the coffers of the Biden crime family. It is a crime family. He's a corrupt, corrupt person. It's often said that Republicans don't fight hard enough, and I agree with that. We need more fighters like Tommy and others. We have some good fighters, but we don't have enough of them. We have some bad ones, too. But they never said that about Trump. And I think it's one of the reasons that you like me. It's one of the reasons we love that I you. like you. And it's we one of the reasons you. I like Alabama because you're fighters. You. We love you. We love you. And you'll see that on the very first day of my presidency. The deep state is destroying our nation, but the tables must turn and we will quickly destroy the deep state. We know where the bodies are buried. Ooh. In the most recent Rasmussen poll, we are up by 44 points with Trump at 57 percent, Ron DeSanctimonious at 13 percent, and the rest of them are very low. Even last week's New York Times poll has me up by 37 points. 37, that's a lot. What do you think, Kay? It's hard to blow a 37. We're going to be very, we will not play prevent defense. Is that okay? They're the football players and the great people. And you are a great football state. We know all about prevent defense. You hold the team scoreless for almost four quarters. You just have to do it one more time. And the coach goes, prevent. Touchdown, touchdown. We don't, we don't play prevent. We will fight and we will fight hard. But we're at a level that we've never been at. We have the highest poll numbers we've ever had. And that's because the people of our country are disgusted with what's happening. We're dominating crooked Joe Biden in the general election. The Harvard-Harris poll, not a good poll for me ever, has me way up and uh, leading by five, six, and seven points with Trump up 18 points among independents. You know, you keep hearing about independence. How is he going to do with the independents? You know, independents like to have great walls. And they want to have, you know, we built almost 500 miles of wall, and then we were going to build another 200. And we had Mexico come in and give us 28,000 soldiers free of charge. You know, they say, oh, did you charge Mexico? I told the president, we need 28,000 soldiers while the wall is being built. And he looked at me and said, no, 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 we cannot. 28,000. He thought I was crazy. I said, no, no, you will give it. You will give it. You have, we need 28,000 soldiers. And he said, well, you know what? Uh, you're going to have to make a presentation. I said, you send whoever you want. And I said that to his top representatives. We want them, and we want them fast. We want them by Monday morning, 28,000. They said, no, no, we will not do that. I said, yes, you will. You're going to do it. You're going to do it. And the State Department people thought that I was a little crazy. They said, you know, this guy's I'll asking do. for stuff. We've been after this for for many years, like stay in Mexico. I got that too. I said, give me to the State Department. A woman, very good, but she never won anything because Mexico would give her nothing. She worked on Mexico for 25 years. Good woman, but never got anything. I said, give me a top 10 list. Give me the list I want. And I see my great Mike Lindell. By the way, he's the single greatest advertiser in history. I don't know what the hell, I don't know how much money you can make with pillows. You know, if it was oil, I understand. I don't understand the pillow stuff, but I'll tell you, he's, he's been a, he's a true patriot. I see him sitting right there and he loves it. How many rallies have you come to? Like 50 or 70 or something? But Mike is a great guy. Go buy his pillows or his slippers or his towels, whatever the hell you want, just buy it. But they said to me, they said, no, no, we will not do it. I said, yes, you will. Here's the story. We're going to put a tariff on your cars and all the other things you're selling into the United States of America where you're making a fortune of 25%. That's billions and billions of dollars. 
And if you don't give us those soldiers by Monday morning, I'm putting that tariff on and I'm signing it right now, right in front of you. Here it is. I'm signing it. I signed it. Uh, Sir, we'd like to uh, have a five minute pause. May I make a phone call? So he went and called. I assume the president of the country came back five minutes later. Now he was saying, absolutely, we wouldn't give. Now he goes, Sir, it would be our great honor to give you 28,000 soldiers to protect your border. We think that's very, and it would be our great honor to create a policy of stay in Mexico. You know, they used to stay in our country. That was the end of it. We wanted them to stay in Mexico, and we wanted them to come in maybe to our country after they've been checked out. So we had hundreds of thousands of people staying in Mexico, right on the other side of the wall that we built. And uh, worked out very well. We had a very good relationship, actually, with the president of Mexico. He's a socialist, but that you can't have everything. But we had a very good relationship. But we got everything. We got so many other things, literally with phone calls. You know the story in France where they were going to charge us 25 percent, a tremendous. They were going to charge us a tremendous amount for any company doing business in France. They were going to charge us a lot of money, these companies. I said, you can't do it. I gave it to my people. I said, tell them I can't do it. They came back a week later. Well, they won't listen to us. They're going to do it. It's almost too late. I think it's being passed. So I called up Emmanuel Macron. I said, Emmanuel, you're not going to charge 25% to our companies doing business in France. What the hell do they need France for anyway? You're not going to do it. He said, oh, Donald, it is too late. I'm sorry. It's too late. I said, well, I'll tell you what's too late. Don't know. On Monday morning at 7 o'clock in the morning, I'm putting a 100% tariff tax on your wine and champagne that comes into the United States. That takes place at 7 o'clock on Monday morning. This was a Friday. So you let me know within the next half hour what's going to happen. But we are putting a tax on, and I've just signed the bill. And it's going to go into an effect in two days. And he called me back about uh, two minutes later. He said, Donald, we have decided not to put the 25% tax on. We have decided. <laughs> we have decided. Now, that's the good news. The bad news, as soon as Biden got in, they put all sorts of bad things in. And nobody calls him. Do you think Biden calls him and says, by the way, you're not going to put that tax on? You think that happens? I don't think so. He doesn't know what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> and in the big new premise poll, we're beating Biden by five points with the sanctimonious losing to Biden 33 to 38. The sanctimonious is actually not doing a good job. You know, you wonder why I don't like him because I got him elected. Oh, he was losing badly. No he was down many, many points. I think like 38 or 40 or some ridiculous number. He actually talks about it in the old days. And he came to my office, tears in his eyes saying, please, can I have your endorsement? I said, listen, you're so far down to a man named Adam Putnam, who was the Secretary of Agriculture, which is a big deal in Florida. He was down by many, many, many points. Like, I mean, many points. It was over. I said, if I brought back George Washington and Abraham Lincoln, you don't have a chance. He said, sir, I'm telling you, if you endorse me, I'll win. So... I remember that I saw him on television a couple of times talking about the impeachment hoax number one and impeachment hoax number two and fighting for me a little bit. He was no Jim Jordan. He was no, you know, some of the great guys we have, but he was fighting for me a little bit. Always on television. I said, and I didn't know Adam Putnam, unfortunately, for him. So I endorsed Ron to Sanctimonious and he went like a rocket ship <laughs> and uh, he took this massive lead immediately like it took one night and he was he went from being way way down to being way way up he ended up winning the primary in a landslide a few weeks a very short time later but then he couldn't have won the general because he was running against the guy gilliam remember the guy who was going to be the star of the democrats african-american man a very handsome man turned out to be a crack addict but we don't have to mention that that was <laughs> Bad but he was the hottest one. Him and Stacey Abrams were the two hottest politicians in the Democrat Party. He was going to be the next president, they said. He's going to be the next person. He's going to be governor. And the sanctimonious comes up to me. I can't beat him. There's no way. I said, look, we'll do some rallies. Would you? Could you do three? I said, three is a lot. <laughs> but I ended up doing three rallies for him. And they were big. They had thousands and thousands and thousands of people. You know about our rally. We had in your little area a little while ago, 
We had a rally, 68,000 people. We broke, we broke Elvis's record, right? Wow. So I did these rallies for him, and he ended up winning. He won. It was a big upset. He ended up winning. And then three years later, they said, are you going to run for president against the former president? And he said, I have no comment. He said, he has no comment. That means he's running. <laughs> that son of a bitch. He's running. <laughs> We're not going to take that. And I started hitting him, and he has been like, Pshee. So if, with those people, uh, Lee Greenwood, when they ask, we have to do a song about this, I think, Lee, but when they ask me whether or not I like him, I'm not a big fan of his. You know? Not a big fan. I like loyalty. You know, they told me that loyalty doesn't matter in politics. Some of my genius is right backstage right now. Sir, don't tell that story, because loyalty doesn't matter in politics. I said, I think it does. It turned uh, out that I was right because he has dropped like a rock and hopefully he'll stay there. I think he will. They said, what's the problem with him? I said, he's got no personality, which actually is true. It's good. Kay, in politics, you need a personality, right? We, knew, we learned a long time ago, you need a little personality. When I asked who's the best to improve the economy, it's Trump at 54, to Sanctus at about 11. Who's the best in New Hampshire? 55 to 11. In South Carolina, 59 to 12. In Nevada, 65 to 10. It's going to be tough to blow it, but I don't want to say it. Where's Wood? I need Wood. He's got to knock I found Wood. wood. Knock Otherwise, I'd walk off the stage to find a piece. I'm I want to knock on Wood. Well, yeah. Because I don't like to talk this way. All the rest are in very low numbers, very low single digits. But despite the demented prosecution of our movement by our corrupt and highly partisan Department of Injustice and deranged Jack Smith. Doesn't he look deranged? You see the picture with the purple robe? He's a deranged human being. We're getting stronger by the day. Somebody said, you should treat him nicer. Maybe he'd be nice. Let me tell you. No. This guy is a lost soul. Bad guy. No get nicer. He's a deranged, sick person. Think of what we already achieved in this incredible four years, and we had to go through Russia, Russia, Russia. We had to go through the Mueller report, which after two and a half years said no collusion, right? No collusion, it said, with Russia. We had to go through all those phony FISA things that were signed so badly. We had to go through a lot. All hoaxes and scams, and it's not changed at all. And they're the ones that have to be investigated, and those elections have to be investigated because we have to have those honorable elections in our country. We delivered the largest tax cuts and regulatory cuts in the history of America. And likewise, we built the greatest economy in the history of the world. There's never been an economy like that. We achieved energy independence. And we're soon going to have energy dominance for the first time in 78 years. We appointed over 300 federal judges and three great Supreme Court justices. And look what they just gave us with colleges. You actually, if get good marks, you could actually get in. You don't have to take second fiddle to somebody that didn't get good marks. And last year, those justices ruled on a thing called Roe v. Wade. They ended it, and nobody thought that was possible. And I have to tell you, from the Republican and conservative standpoint, you have to learn how to talk about pro-life. You have to learn how to talk about that decision because you don't know how to talk about it. Pro-lifers have a tremendous power now with that termination to negotiate. They had none. They didn't have any before that ruling. They had no power whatsoever. They could kill babies at any time they wanted, including after what we would call birth. They could kill babies. Now they have tremendous power to negotiate because they don't have Roe v. Wade. This moves the issue back to the states where all legal scholars felt it should be, out of the federal government and back to the states. That's a big deal. On both sides, they felt it should be. Now, like President Ronald Reagan before me, I support the three exceptions for rape, incest, and the life of the mother. And I will say that uh, in terms of running, you have to go with your heart. You have to go with what you want. But the three exceptions to me are very important. And the three exceptions, I think, to a large portion of the uh, people on this issue are very important.
Very, very important. Remember, the Democrats are the radicals on this issue. And you have to remember that. The Democrats, we're not the radicals on this issue. The Democrats are the radicals because they're willing to kill babies in their fifth and sixth and seventh and eighth and ninth month and even after birth. Remember the governor of Virginia, that whack job who thought he was Michael Jackson, remember? They said, They said, let's see you moonwalk, Governor, and his wife saved him because he would have moonwalked and it wouldn't have been pretty. He was ready to do it. It would not have been good. But he said, uh, yes, the baby's born. And then we sit down and we talk to the mother racist. and we decide whether or not we essentially terminate the baby's life. This is a baby born. And they have that too. numerous states that you can kill the baby after birth. So they're the extremists, not us. You have to fight that issue differently. A lot of Republicans, a lot of House members, they weren't able to talk about the issue. They didn't know how. They didn't say that they were the radicals, that they were the extremists. They're the extremists. They didn't say that it gave us tremendous power to negotiate. And we now have that tremendous power. They have to talk about it right. And it'll be your issue, not their issue. I fully rebuilt the US military created Space Force, and put the U.S. Space Command in Alabama, which Biden just moved the hell out of your state. But maybe that's not going to be the end of that story. We defeated ISIS and brought our troops back home. Yeah, we moved the whole thing into Alabama, and they just uh, announced they're going to take it out of your state. So you'll remember that. And I was the first president in decades who didn't start a war. We got people out of wars. We defeated ISIS. We defeated 100% of the ISIS caliphate. But all of that was only the beginning. Here's just some of the agenda that I will immediately implement when we become the 47th president of the United States. And it's we, not I. I will totally obliterate the deep state. It's a sick, bad group of people. Oh. I will say no to 87,000 oh. IRS agents who want to take your money and destroy your lives. I will end the disaster known as Bidenomics, which shall henceforth be defined as inflation, submission, and failure. Bam. We will turn around our economy very, very quickly. I will cancel every Biden regulation that's harming Alabama workers and workers all over the United States. One of the first things that I will do to help the great people of Alabama is to approve a six lane I-65 from Huntsville to Mobile. I, I heard Huntsville to Mobile. And I heard, you know, some of your great congressmen who I introduced, I introduced your great, all of your congressmen, everyone have, in, have endorsed me, it's such an honor, but I said, what can I do for this great state? You can make a six-laner. Do does everyone agree that's a big deal? Yeah? Okay. We'll get that done on the first day, okay? First day. I'll bring down the cost of energy, and we will become energy independent and even energy dominant, just as we were three years ago. We were going to supply all of the energy to Europe Oil and gas, we were going to make so much money, then we were going to start paying down debt. You ever look at the balance sheet of Saudi Arabia? Ooh. We have more oil than they do. We have more oil than Russia has. I got Anwar approved. No president could get that done. Ronald Reagan tried. They all tried. I got it done. The first thing that Biden did is he ended it. Anwar in Alaska, probably the largest site for oil anywhere in the world. I will reverse every one of Biden's globalist economic betrayals to once again put America first and put Alabama first. We're going to put Alabama first where it should be. And unlike Ron DeSanctimonious, who voted to gut Medicare, can you believe that? And also voted three times to decimate a thing called Social Security and also to raise the retirement age on Social Security all the way up to 70. I mean, you earned that. There are many other things we can cut. We could do a lot of things that you won't be feeling, but you can't play with Social Security and Medicare. But we will always protect Medicare and Social Security 
for our great seniors. Not going to touch it. And you saw that because we didn't touch it. Before I even arrive at the Oval Office, shortly after we win the presidency, because we are going to win it, I will have We're going. the horrible war between Russia and Ukraine settled. I know them both very well. They will settle. Would have never, ever happened. It will be done very, very quickly. I'm the only candidate who can make this promise. I will prevent World War III. And don't kid yourself, we're a lot closer to it than you think. A lot closer. And that would be a war like no other, because we wouldn't have army tanks going back and forth shooting. They have nuclear. The levels of power are not to be believed. To stop the destruction of our wealth, I will impose a border tariff on all foreign-made goods. You want to sell? You just want to sell into our country. You're going to have to pay for that. That's a great privilege that we do that. We get we get hurt so badly with trade. I made so many great trade deals, including with Japan and South Korea, and by the way, China for our farmers and manufacturers, $50 billion a year. I don't even talk about that because of what they did with COVID. I will also pass what we call the Trump Reciprocal Trade Act. In other words, if China or any other country makes us pay a 100% or 200% tariff, we will make them pay a reciprocal tariff of 100% or 200% right back. Only fair? It's only fair. And one of two things will happen. They'll end their tariff, which in most cases will happen, or it's we'll take fair. it a lot of money, and so will they, but we'll take it a lot of money. Can you imagine? They charge us 100% tariffs and 200% tariffs, and for the same product, we charge them nothing. And we were all set to get that done and approved, and then COVID came in. And we had other things to do, but we're going to get that done. Reciprocal. It's got to be reciprocal. We will gain total independence from China, and I will hold the Chinese Communist Party accountable for unleashing the China virus upon the world. You know, uh, it's estimated they can't pay it. Nobody can pay it. $60 trillion in damages and the death the death, the millions and millions of people all over the world, the damage they did. And I always said it came from the Wuhan lab, and it did. It came from the Wuhan lab. They said the other day, Trump was right about that one, too. Trump was right about everything, actually. I will immediately terminate every open borders policy of the Biden administration. What's happening on our border? What's happening on our border is unthinkable. We had the safest border in the history of our country, and now we have the most unsafe border, I think, anywhere in the world. There's never been anything like it. No third world country would have a border like that. They'd fight people with sticks and stones if they had to. Under Biden, other countries are emptying out their prisons and sane asylums and mental institutions and dumping everyone, including terrorists, into the United States of America. Many terrorists are coming in. Their prisons are emptied out, emptying out all over the world, not just the three or four countries that we consider more or less neighbors. Guatemala, no, Guatemala's rough, very small prison population. El Salvador, very small. Mexico, very small. They're emptying them out. There was a psychiatrist who's been at a certain South American country for many years running a big mental institution, and they showed him sitting in the institution reading a newspaper and they were interviewing him. He said, uh, how are you doing? He said, I have nothing to do. We had many, many mental patients, people very, very sick, very ill. And uh, they're no longer here. And the reporter said, where are they? They've all been brought into the United States of America. They've been dumped into the United States of America. How stupid are we? How stupid are we? And uh, they're emptying out those institutions, and they're emptying out all of their prisons and all of their jails, and they're coming in here, and we're going to get them out of this country fast. We're going to get them out so fast. It's a very bad situation. We're going to be paying a price for that for a long time. Who, who could want that? Who could want it? Who could want it? They are either very stupid, which they're not. You can't cheat on elections like that and be stupid. They're either very stupid or, in the alternative, they truly hate our country. And I believe they truly That's hate it. our country. When I'm back in the White House, 
Following the Eisenhower model, we will use all necessary state, local, federal, and military resources to carry out the largest domestic deportation operation in American history. And we have no choice. Some people won't like that. We have no choice. No country can bear this. And I believe the real number is $15 million. I looked 15 million people. I, I looked the other day on television two days ago. I saw thousands and thousands and thousands of people on Madison Avenue in New York. They are illegal immigrants. And I looked and I said, the city cannot survive like that. But all of our cities are going through it. And even before that, the Democrats are doing such a bad job of running our cities. They're running them into the ground. The crime is setting records. We have numbers that are up 250 and 300 percent from just a few years ago. Unbelievable. The laws are being broken. The prosecutors go after Trump. Let's go after Trump. But if somebody murders somebody, they know they're there and they don't even bother picking them up. Our country is sick. It's sick. And we have to change it. And we're going to change it fast. I will use Title 42 to end the child trafficking crisis by returning all trafficked children to their families and their home countries immediately. And we will restore the Trump travel ban to keep radical Islamic terrorists out of our country, as I did with great success. You saw that for four years, we had no problem. To stop the Marxist prosecutors who release rapists and murderers while persecuting Republicans, conservatives, and people of faith, and they do that. I'll tell you, they're really after the Catholics. They are after the Catholic Church. It's incredible. I don't know how many Catholics are in, but they are after the Catholic Church. They're after parents, school boards. It's unbelievable. I will direct a completely overhauled DOJ to investigate every radical DA and AG in America for their illegal, racist, in reverse enforcement of the law. On day one, I will sign a new executive order to cut federal funding for any school pushing critical race theory, transgender insanity, and other inappropriate Blow racial, it. sexual, or political yes. content on our children. It's unbelievable. <laughs> and my administration, and we did many of these things, you know, many of these things were put back into effect because many of these things were done. They were done. My administration will strictly enforce this summer's Supreme Court decision to move our country forward with a merit-based system of education. Isn't that a nice system of education? Merit-based. Did you ever think you were going to see that? Supreme Court upheld merit-based. We didn't have merit-based. In addition, I will return power to the parents of our country. Who would have thought we would have ever had to say that? Can you imagine that? We will return power to parents. Of course you want to return the power, especially when it comes to schools. You will have your power back. I will close the Department of Education and move all education back to the states where it belongs. We were going to do that. We were ready. And then we had, we had the COVID. And, and think of it. We're at the bottom of every list. We spend more money per pupil Sometimes two and three times what other countries that are very top on the list spend. But we spend more money on education per pupil by far than any other country. And yet we're at the bottom of all the lists. It's terrible. So we're going to move it back so that, Kay, you can handle it. Can you handle it? Are you okay with that? Good. Lieutenant Governor, you're going to help her out a little bit? Yes. Good. We're going to move it back to the states because in Alabama, you'll run a great system and the states will run a great system. And if they don't, those people won't be around very long, but that's where it's going to be. The states are going to run education. By the way, the government will save massive amounts of money, and the states will do a phenomenal job. Some states will do unbelievably. Some won't do as well. But it's more pinpointed. It's local. The parents are more involved, and it'll make the biggest difference. It'll be the greatest thing ever to happen to education in the United States. I didn't shit talk. I died. And I will keep men out of women's sports. That's a big one. That's a good one. That's a big one. That's a good one. Gotta do that. You see some of the records that are being broken? Weightlifting records are being shattered. Records that stood for 18 years are being shattered. It's a disgrace. And it's a very bad thing and very demeaning to women. We're going to end that immediately. I will sign a law prohibiting child 
sexual mutilation in all 50 states. Now, think of that. Don't cut off Johnny. Child me. sexual mutilation. Could you imagine 15 years ago saying, we're going to stop child sexual mutilation, that you even have to say a thing like that? It's not even believable. It's but not. We do, because we have a sick country. And in a way, it's a sick world. And we're going to stop it. We'll be the first. We're going to stop it. We're going to stop it cold. I will also restore the Trump ban on transgender in the military. We had, oh, we had a ban. Like a, we had a ban, and the, the ban weed. was immediately lifted, like 24 hours after the this incompetent fool got elected. Just as I did for four years, I will fully uphold the Second Amendment. Second Amendment, your guns are going to be protected. And I will fully secure our elections. Our goal will be one day voting with paper ballots and voter ID. Very simple. But until then, Republicans must compete. We must win. We have to compete and we have to win. But we're going to get back to the old system. You know, France had 36 million votes fairly recently. They had an election. Uh, they were they had mail in ballots for one day, a long period of time. One and they day. realized they're all rigged. It was all rigged. So they went back to paper ballots they Had 36 million votes. It was all over by 10 o'clock in the evening. They had a winner. They had a loser. Everybody went home and a lot of people were happy and a lot of people oh, weren't, no. but there was no protest. There was no anything. Uh, they felt there was a fair election, and they feel very happy with what they did. This is what we must do to restore our country to greatness. The USA is a mess. Our economy oh, is crashing. Inflation is out of control. China, Russia, Iran, and North Korea have formed together as a menacing and destructive coalition, a truly destructive and dangerous coalition. Our currency is crashing and will soon no longer be the world standard based on what's happening right now. And that'll be the greatest defeat for our country in 200 years if we lose the world standard or currency. It won't happen with me, not even a little bit of a chance, just like Russia would never have invaded Ukraine and China would not be even thinking about going into Taiwan, not even thinking about it. And I would talk to President Xi and I would talk to President Putin Zero chance. Zero. Oh, you can't do that. Zero. And we would have left Afghanistan Zero. with dignity and strength instead of our greatest embarrassment in all of history. <laughs> Leaving behind $85 billion worth of the best, most beautiful military equipment that I bought. The best equipment. 13 dead soldiers, many horrifically wounded. American citizens are still there. Nobody even knows what's happening with them. If you took the five worst presidents in the history of the United States and added them up, they would not have done near the destruction to our country as crooked Joe, Joe Biden. Biden and the Biden administration have done. He's a crooked guy. Crooked guy. Hey, it's bad, bad. You know, I never hit him this hard. If you followed me, and many of you have, I never hit him that hard because I had to respect the office of the president, the office of the president. Take off the gloves, man. And I did. I had great respect. So I'd talk as a politician would talk about somebody, but I never hit him this hard. But when they indicted their political opponent and they did that, I said, now the gloves are off. He is a crooked, incompetent thief. <laughs> and he shouldn't be allowed to be the president and the republicans better get tough and they better get smart now because most of them look like a bunch of weak jerks right now yep. and you got to get tough and smart and you have to fight fire with fire I you can't fire. allow this to go on so i spoke much differently prior to that happening <laughs> And when it actually first happened, I said, no, I don't believe that. That can't be, especially these bogus charges. Presidential Records Act. I come under the Presidential Records Act and then challenging an election. I mean, if you challenge an election, Hillary Clinton has been challenging, even though at three o'clock in the morning she said, you won. But then she went back to challenging it to this day. Stacey Abrams challenges it. Many... Many congressmen have challenged it over the years. Many senators have challenged it. Uh, if you take a look at the West Coast, Hollywood, 
has challenged it. But I think most of them voted for Trump. You know, a lot of them were saying, this Trump, this Trump. And then they say, you know, if I vote for him, I'm going to pay about one third the taxes. I think I'm going to vote for Trump. But let's not talk about it. We did actually very well in Beverly Hills. Sort of amazing. But we are a failing nation. We are a nation in decline. And now these radical left lunatics want to interfere with our elections by using law enforcement, the DOJ and the FBI. It's totally corrupt and we can't let it happen to our country. Dismantle them. 2024 is our final battle. It's our final and biggest battle ever. It is. With you at my side, we will demolish that horrible deep state. We will expel the warmongers, the fools from our government. We will drive out the globalists and we will cast out the communists, Marxists, fascists, and throw off the sick political class that hates our country, absolutely hates our country. We will rout the fake news media. We will defeat crooked Joe Biden. And we will drain the swamp once I and for all. Swamp. We will get that done. And it'll go. The, swamp. the great silent majority is rising like never before. And under our leadership, the forgotten man and woman will be forgotten no longer. And I said that in 2016, and we were right. But then they took that beautiful, beautiful right away from you. With your help, your love, and your vote, we will make America great again, greater than ever before. Thank you very much, Alabama. And God bless you all. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. wrapping up his speech here in Montgomery, Alabama for the Alabama GOP state dinner. He spoke for about an hour and 15 minutes, of course, bringing up the fake charges brought against him. He says that the Biden DOJ waited until he dominated the polls right in the middle of his election and calling this election interference. He said when he wins in 2024, he will appoint a special prosecutor to study every claim brought against him, saying he will, with the American people and those supporting him, destroy the deep state. He went over his accomplishments as president when he was the 45th president of the United States. And then he went over some of his plans for when he wins in 2024. You can find that on his website, donaldjtrump.com under Agenda 47. There you can see an entire list of his plans for the presidency. Again, we want to thank our sponsors tonight for being and sticking with RSBN. First, Birch Gold. Text the word Trump to the number 989898. Receive a free info kit on how you can better save during these hard times in the economy. Your IRA, your 401k, a representative will call you and invest with Birch Gold. The Trump Tumblr is perfect for you, a family member, a co-worker, or a friend. TrumpTumblr.com, $10. Oh, friends, there you have it. President Trump, after the indictment of the January 6th fiasco, the witch hunt. Oh, I'm so glad I was able to do this. I was really trying to live stream it on YouTube. But unfortunately, I thought about it last minute and I'd never live streamed before. So I didn't realize like 
the things that I w- needed to do and how to screen share it and all of that. But um, hopefully I'll look into how that's done. And so next time I want to go live, I'll, I'll know what to do. So, but I'm glad I was able to um, have this moment to just sit back and watch a rally. Well, it wasn't a rally. It's a dinner, but you know, Trump talks for, for me, it's a rally because you know, that's what he is. So it was really great to do this. I, I hope to do it again. And again, I'm going to start doing those live streams. So I will figure out how to get it done. Okay. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Keep trumping. Keep trumping. Keep trumping. Let you hear what my my trumper say. I will build a great, great wall on our southern border, and I will have Mexico pay for that wall. I don't wear a toupee. It's my hair. I swear.